Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the JSOC weekly meeting. Uh, today we have a regular sync up to talk about uh, the incoming JSOC 2019. Uh, we have already applied to JSOC. We wait uh, for the application feedback, but in the uh, meantime, we still prepare to the. Uh, just a second, Arnab. Oh, yeah, I'll mute him. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, we just talk about the projects, try to get them over the fence and answer uh, any kinds of questions from uh, students and mentors. So that's uh, the objective. Um, I'll share my screen um, and yeah. Do you see my screen now? Uh, so if anybody wants to join, there is a Gitter chat and in the Gitter chat, you can find a, a link to the today's uh, broadcast. So you can just uh, join the participant link or we will post it in the YouTube and there is also a link to the meeting notes. Um, so we don't have specific topics uh, in the agenda, but uh, since we have new people on the call, let's uh, do some introductions. Then uh, yeah, we can sync up on ongoing action items and yeah, a and then uh, uh, project um, ideas review. Um, anything else uh, to add to the agenda? Okay, I guess now. So yeah, since we have uh, several people, um, uh, would you guys be interested to introduce yourself? Hello, hello everyone. I'm Sagar Alani, and I joined uh, the SIG group, I think, a month ago. But I was busy in my projects. So, uh, for starters, starters, I have uh, read the Jenkins handbook, and I have also developed one plugin uh, using Baldung's blog post. So I'm exploring Jenkins right now, and I was interested in configuration as a code plugin and role strategy performance plugins. Mm -hmm. And so I read the documentation about configuration as code. Uh, it says, I think I read it uh, one week uh, ago. So it said we have to select some plugins uh, which mm -hmm. we which we can improve. So is there any further talk on which plugins should we improve, or I have to explore some plugins? Yeah, um, uh, let's uh, take a look um, at it later. I'll uh, add it uh, to the agenda so that uh, we will discuss once uh, we get to that. Plugins uh, to improve. Okay, um, I added to that. So uh, we also have uh, Arnab on the call. Um, Arnab, would you be interested uh, to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Arnab Damji. So uh, actually I, uh, I was a GSOC student last year. And uh, I had done my project uh, under the INCF organization. Mm -hmm. So the project was in Python, and uh, it was in the domain of uh, computational biology. And uh, in the domain of, uh, it was like basically at, in the intersection of uh, biology and coding, basically. So from a domain point of view, it was, it was not something that was related to what Jenkins is all about. But uh, it was a good GSOC experience, and I completed the project successfully. So now that I've graduated from college, I'm not allowed to be a GSOC student anymore. So I won't be applying as a student this time. But uh, this time, uh, there are two projects, the discard steps, uh, the build steps project, uh, and like working on that plugin, that project, and the other project, uh, which is probably the only project in the list, which is uh, in the Windows uh, environment C sharp and all that. Uh, um, so those two projects are uh, something that I found a little interesting. Uh, I haven't yet uh, jumped into the code base. Uh, I haven't done a deep dive analysis yet, uh, which I plan to do in the coming days. So I'm planning to co-mentor those two projects. So, and uh, yeah, and uh, since this is my first time, just giving an introduction. So currently I'm working as a a software developer at Credit Suisse, which is a bank. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. Um, okay, uh, thanks for the introduction. And yeah, we also have uh, Python project ideas in review. We can talk about them later. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, Martin, um, uh, could you please introduce? 
uh, not Martin uh, yourself, but yeah, there is a student together with you. Uh, yes, I'll pass him the mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm Garrett Hackle. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm a student. I'm just in grade 12, applying for a university, and I'm applying for um, software engineering and computer science. So this is probably what you're doing is what I might be doing in the future. So I want to, I want to see what you do. Thank you, Derek. Well, I'll just introduce myself quickly. My name is Martin, and I'm a org admin on this program, as well as a mentor um, during the program. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, all other org admin. So my name is Alek Minashev. We have Jeff Pierce on the call. Uh, we have Lo Chang. Um, and um, yeah, we also have uh, Rick on the call, who's a mentor for the GitLab SCM plugin. Uh, we already introduced ourselves, so yeah, maybe we could uh, continue with um, uh, the discussion, unless we want to spend more time on introductions. What uh, would you prefer? Maybe move on. Okay, then let's move on. So let's take a look at uh, our action items. Um, so yeah, I added uh, config as code, uh, also uh, discard build steps. Then yeah, uh, we'll have some other project ideas. Uh, okay, actually I'll move, I'll move it here. Okay, um, now let's take uh, start from the action items. So we have some action items uh, yeah, which uh, were open for a while. So. Martin, uh, it seems you invited every mentor to the main uh, mentor list, right? Uh, at least uh, there were a lot of um, uh, messages about that. Yes, I did the invite from the Gitter chat. Mm -hmm. um, my plan was to look at, uh, I'll look at the list and see if everybody's signed up and if not i'll send reminders again i think the next time i'll go with personal messages in getter since i don't have those emails mm -hmm. okay thank you so if you're a mentor and if you're not in the mailing list let us know we will add you or you can just uh, request joining on yourself another action item so Swag distribution uh, in printing. Um, so my plan is to get everything delivered uh, during February, if nothing gets delayed. Um, regarding special interest groups, hardware in India Seek is published. It's ready. Embedded Seek uh, is still on me, but we do not have uh, project ideas uh, for embedded space so far. So it's not uh, critical for JSOC. But yeah, if somebody uh, wants to have something specific to embedded. Yeah, more than welcome to do that. And JSOC work admin checklist, it's still open. Expense report, Jeff? Still not done. OK. <laughs> In the worst case, you could just donate uh, uh, it to Jenkins. But yeah, yeah I encourage you to expense it finally. Actually, to, to be honest, I was considering just doing that. So why what, what, what don't we, we say that that's the outcome? Yeah, we will just uh, need uh, to ask Kiki to send you a thank you message after that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then um, what else do we have? Yeah, we had some uh, q &A last week. Um, I believe that uh, all action items are more or less done. So we get got some clarity on uh, uh, multi-branch support for GitLab. Uh, let's discuss it today since we have both mentors. Um, then. Um, yeah, we still need to organize something for Docker things, but we started a new Gitter chat for Docker. So I believe uh, that uh, everybody interested in this project will be moving there and they will be more focused in discussions. So yeah, I think this section item is also done. Um, and yeah, what else did we have? Actually, that's it from uh, last time, I believe. Am I missing any action items? Oh, yeah. I like pinging folks about uh, project application feedback. 
So yeah, we have uh, one week uh, before the application deadline. Everything is in place, but um, if uh, uh, you want to propose improvements in the application, it would be better to do it now. So please take a look at our application document. And if you want to change something, especially if you're org admin or a mentor, uh, let us know. So it's located here, uh, GSOC 2019. And in the bottom, you can see application draft. So this markdown uh, document, and effectively, you can just uh, propose a pull request. And once you do that, we will reflect it in our application. Yeah, Oleg, this is Lloyd. Um, yep. There was another item. I'm sorry, I had put it in the same paragraph as Docker's that I had assigned to Martin. It was about balancing the mentors uh, across projects. And the idea was for mentors not to be spread too thin. Martin said he'll give it a thought on it. So I assigned it to him in the Google Doc. OK, should we discuss it uh, later too? Uh, uh, balancing uh, mentors for this one. Uh, OK, so we will think more about it. So yeah, we can just discuss it today if we get to that. Mm, Martin, uh, are you fine with that? Or do you want to take more time uh, to process it? Well, I think. Um... When we when we get to the point where we where we review the student applications is when we're going to have to do the balancing. For now, it's just we have to keep all the project proposals um, mm -hmm. going. You know, as as students are asking questions, we just have to keep it going. I don't know of another okay. way. Yeah, I do agree. So for now, there should be no large traffic, though, yeah, this project ideas requires some more time. And yeah, uh, we get some uh, student uh, requests. So yeah, that's nice, but yeah, it also requires mentor time. So uh, let's press it to Q&A then. And then, uh, yeah, probably if there are more thoughts, uh, we can just discuss it after the meeting. So configuration as code uh, plugins to improve. How many mentors do we have today on the call? Uh, me and Martin, right? So no, no other mentors for this project. Um, so just uh, to answer this, uh, this question, uh, there is so, uh, so there is our project ideas list, and there is configuration as code compatibility project. So in this project. Um, OK, now it should be fine. In this project, we have um, we don't have specific list of plugins. But what we do, we actually reference um, plugin compatibility dashboard. It's here. And there is a number of plugins which still need to be made compatible with JSOC, uh, sorry, with configuration as code plugins. So there are some major plugins. For example, um, here, let's take a look. Uh, for example, Jira plugin, uh, Gradle plugin, uh, Gary Trigger, um, they are not integrated. Also, some uh, there are some minor bits in other plugins. And moreover, um, there may be other plugins which are not compatible. So there is a quick start. And actually, the quick start presumes that you can uh, just, uh, uh, you could uh, try uh, several demos. And uh, if you like this project idea, you can just take a look at existing plugins and see what is not compatible. So yeah, we expect students uh, to come up with uh, their own list of plugins, though we can make some suggestions um, as mentors. Um, so uh, Martin, from the top of your head, what uh, which plugins would you recommend to focus on? I would go with the most the plugins that have the most installations. Mm -hmm. I, but off the top of my head, I know that there's been some progress on the external workspace manager, but it's not a very popular plugin. Yeah. So we can just uh, go um, to plugins Jenkins IO. And if you're interested, you can just uh, open plugin. And you see here you can see number of installations. So for example, this is something like 7,000, which is pretty high for a uh, uh, plugin. 
and uh, yeah, we can take something else. Uh, what else? We can take Mailer plugin, for example. But yeah, Mailer plugin is installed almost everywhere. So yeah, it's 200 thousand installations, and yeah, there is still some improvements possible here for JCask. Um, yeah, you can um, take uh, plugins based on uh, installation numbers. So my recommendation would be to actually take plugins based on your own preferences. So if you like particular area, uh, for example, if you're interested in Git uh, stack or if you're interested in AWS stack or something like that, uh, you could uh, just make a proposal around this stack. So you can propose, I would like to work on uh, plugins in, um, let's say, uh, for uh, uh, Microsoft Asia. Um, you just uh, explore the plugins and the uh, uh, find some issues there and provide a list of plugins you want uh, to focus on and it would be a really good starting point uh, for a project application so uh, which area would you interest uh, to use agar hello like uh, yeah. i think i will explore the quick start guide which you have given uh, mm -hmm. which, is, which is there on the document and i and i, I am quite interested in the I think AWS, so I will explore the AWS space and see if I can make any improvements there. Yeah. So for AWS, you can just, uh, yeah, even just search for AWS shows, yeah, quite a number of plugins. And I'm definitely sure that some of these plugins are not compatible with JCask. So how to discover them? Uh, one of the ways is actually to look at um, uh, compatible Jenkins version numbers. Because uh, if the version is low, for example, if it's something like 1, 5, uh, uh, 32 or so, most uh, likely the plugin uses old APIs, and it's uh, much more likely that this plugin isn't compatible with JCask. So if you want to discover issues, it's uh, one of the ways. You just take a look at this list, um, find plugins which uh, you like, which you use. So if you use AWS Lambda, there is Lambda plugin, the device farm, there is also plugin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you take a look at these plugins. Uh, most likely, you will see some incompatibilities, and yet yeah, um, it could be a good starting point. Okay, Oleg, I'll watch into it. Okay. So that's good. Um, so uh, Oleg, I, I wanted to discuss about something like about the list of projects actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was wondering if it would be a good idea uh, to maybe, uh, you, you know, in the projects page, if we have uh, maybe uh, an additional uh, attribute for each of the ideas wherein maybe the senior contributors of the Jenkins team can decide which projects are maybe high priority because some organizations have seen uh, what they do is they write that for, for every project they write the priority like is it a high priority project or a low low priority project so what happens is when the student application period opens and when there is a sudden um, inflow of a lot of students who are you know going through all the all the project ideas of many uh, uh, organizations so, uh, so sometimes when a student is confused between which uh, idea to work on, and uh, maybe if there are multiple project ideas which are all, all like equally interesting to the student, then then the student might uh, the the student's decision to d decide which project to work on might depend on that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I I don't know if it it'll be a good idea to do that for Jenkins as well, but b because like you said that. There are many plugins, and uh, they they all they are all like concerned with different uh, stacks. Like some are related to Git, some are related to AWS. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if it would, if if it would be a good idea to do it, but uh, yeah. So maybe you can think about it. Yeah. So ranking projects is definitely a good idea. The problem is how to rank these projects because um, yeah, one of the ways would be to just rank them uh, by value to the community. But in the case of Jenkins, um, yeah. Yeah, the value of community really depends on uh, your use cases because oh, okay, uh, yeah. use cases may be completely different. So just uh, using this criteria, it would be extremely complicated. 
So we, we can uh, potentially say that, uh, okay, core features would be higher priority for the community than plugin features. But I would say that even in this list, it doesn't seem uh, to be fully correct. Uh, so we have, if you have ideas how to run these projects, it would be interesting to know. Okay. Uh, and uh, and uh, and another another attribute which generally like again like we we don't have to do it just because some other organizations also do it. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, another thing which some organizations have noticed do is that uh, so in the skills column, apart from the fact that uh, you know so and so languages will be used in this project sometimes uh, sometimes uh, they also you know like uh, write another thing if it will be a difficult project or if it will be a comparatively easier project to do so okay. uh, i i don't know it's like you said it, these things are a little complicated to decide because uh, especially for the importance part like you said what might be important for the community might not be important for someone who's using uh, you're not using that plugin so mm -hmm. it depends on the use case like you said so yeah yeah thanks for the feedback so what do others think so we discussed this topics um, in a slightly different way in the previous meeting and why my thoughts then and i think i relate to martin because oleg you had to step off the call and arna mm -hmm. wasn't um, part of the Jenkins mentorship yet was that we should prioritize in ensuring that students, all students interested in apply for a project can receive mentorship. So it's a slightly different way to think about it. Our primary interest is in building community as the highest priority. And in doing that is to ensure that we have enough mentors for all the students and projects um, for GSOC, and which means um, I don't think it's something we can immediately address tactically, but it would be until later time when Martin says when we need to start balancing how mentors are distributed across project proposals from students. I know it's somewhat complicated, and it's not the type of thing we can easily put onto the Jenkins IO website, like uh, how other projects, which is simply this priority high priority low, priority medium, and so on. Mm -hmm. For ours, we actually need to see the student applications in order to make that type of priority assignment in oh, the mentorship. Yes. OK, yeah, I, I think makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so one of the simple ways to do that would be to just sort uh, the projects by the number of me uh, potential mentors. Uh, well, it's something we could do easily. Uh, I am not 100% sure it, uh, uh, well, in this project, uh, number of mentors is probably um, uh, the best criteria we could estimate is of big uh, value to the community or project priorities. Because if there are more mentors, uh, there are higher chances that uh, this project uh, is interesting to the community and that uh, um, yeah, then uh, it may be successful when uh, and uh, it may be scheduled uh, when we do mentor balancing. Would it make, make sense if we just sort uh, project? I think we can do that as a first step. Uh, my concern is, especially for yourself, mm -hmm. Oleg and Martin, you'll probably have to divide yourself using fractional numbers because you're spread across five or more projects for each of you. Yeah. But well, I don't know uh, the exact count. Yeah, in my case, um, yeah, since we have uh, some ongoing discussions, um, I already built some preferences. So I could uh, remove myself uh, from a few of these uh, projects if you feel that uh, there are too many entries for me. Yeah, and the specific context where it came up was um, in a prior meeting, Vinith had asked, um, he was interested in several projects and or recommendation which one he might want to pursue based on the community's priority. And my response to him was that um, both Andre and Justin are available as mentors, but only for the Docker projects. And since Beneath had already been in conversation with them online about it, um, 
try continuing that one, whereas the other projects, I don't know at this time whether mentors would be available or not. So that's a specific example about this conversation. Yeah. So uh, here we have potential mentors. So right now there is no strict commitment from mentors, as well as uh, there is no strict commitment from students. No, we try to ensure that the mentors understand uh, what means uh, being a mentor. So yeah, if uh, we have discussions with uh, people who want to join this list, uh, to understand that uh, they can really commit on that potentially. Uh, but yeah, I understand your point, Lloyd. Uh, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure how we could ad address that. I uh, think it has to be a case by case basis at yeah. this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for example, for me, the problem my, that, uh, yeah, I'm listed in many projects because these projects are potentially interesting to me. And uh, if uh, there is a good application from student, um, then, uh, yeah, depending on the quality of applications, my preferences uh, among these projects may differ. Uh, so I just state that um, I would consider to be a mentor uh, in projects for, um, and uh, that um, I am ready to be a contact point uh, at this uh, phase. That's why my name is not everywhere, but in many projects. And I think it's okay, but yeah. Okay, so let's uh, sorting projects by number of mentors. It's something we can um, uh, we can do. And it's uh, easy to implement. What else can we do in order to improve uh, um, the experience for students? Lloyd, if you propose uh, removing uh, mentors, so if they uh, list it into many projects, it's probably something else that we can do also. But yeah, I would be rather again. So, uh, Sorry, your audio breaks. Yes, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's say when Jenkins is uh, giving the application to Google, so mm -hmm. uh, for every project, the list of mentor also has to be uh, given, or or is is there a pool of pool of mentors given, and then the distribution can can be like liquid later on, or is it that before the like before during the application period itself, does Jenkins have to make it clear to Google? who are going to be the mentors for which project? And no, it can't. It's, it's not needed. Uh, so um, uh, it happens during the student selection phase. So before the student selection phase, uh, we don't commit uh, on potential uh, on uh, mentor teams. We expect to provide uh, approximate number of people who are interested to be mentors. Um, and we, we have uh, this number from this list. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't commit to provide mapping immediately because yeah, it just doesn't make sense. We can uh, say that, okay, yeah, we have uh, this project, for example, EDA coverage adapters. Um, yeah, we may have a brilliant student application and then everybody from the list wants to mentor that, or maybe not. Maybe we, can, we won't get, get applications at all and mentors from here will migrate to other projects. So right now, there is no committed mentor teams. OK, so I think uh, then uh, the issue of balancing mentors, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, don't you think that it shouldn't be much of an issue then? Because over the next month, as, the, as we see uh, like which projects are getting student attention and which projects are not getting student attention, so accordingly, then maybe the balancing can be done. Then, uh, like, it, it, will it be something to worry about now? Yeah, I just that makes sense to me. Um, it just mm -hmm. when this initially came up in the previous office hour, it was more from the students' perspective of saying they're all listed as potential mentors, 
I'm not quite, quite sure which one I should proceed. And both Martin and I um, recommended that the most successful projects are ones that are driven by the students in ensuring that the outreach to mentors um, results in a good working relationship. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah and also I think uh, during the proposal phase, what I've also noticed is that most of the successful projects are those in which like well before the deadline, the students start working on their proposals and they have their draft reviewed multiple times by the community members and they have multiple changes made to their proposal and so that by the time the deadline comes, their proposal is almost perfect to be selected for that project. Yep, uh, that's also true. So our experience is that uh, all successful students uh, uh, had to reach out uh, to us at least one month before the deadline. Uh, but yeah, anyway, mental balancing happens a bit later. And uh, yeah, we will be able uh, to know more two weeks uh, before uh, the student application deadline. But if the question last week was uh, how to choose a project right now, I believe the best suggestion is like well, that whatever you like, this is uh, the best area for you. Yes. And uh, one last question. Uh, so let's say there are two, two students and uh, let's say they both want to work on the same project. Then how do we reply to that? Like some students have this feeling that if one, one student is already interested in one project so some students they feel a little apprehensive to approach mentors for that project again because they think that someone else is already trying to get into this project so uh, so you know like sometimes they feel a little shy to approach mentors just because someone else has already approached mentors for that project so if two students are interested in the same project so how should we uh, like ask them to go forward with that yeah so if uh, two students are interested and we already have such cases um they they are more than welcome to reach out to mentors they are more than welcome to reach out to each other because yeah uh, jsoc um, is uh, open source contribution and open source project experience for students and collaboration with other stakeholders is a key thing there so if they see that uh, there are potential conflicts between proposals, etc., it's something uh, they can figure out uh, in the beginning. So for example, if there are two students um, and the, if there are meetings set uh, uh, for the project, for example, we had a meeting for role strategy plugin uh, this weekend, and uh, students can just join this meeting, they can join chats and discuss uh, how they would approach that. So they can even uh, work together to file proposals which do not compete with each other and which prevent uh, uh, conflicts so that uh, potentially both projects uh, may be selected. It's something totally possible for some projects. Uh, for others, yeah, it may be not possible. But yeah, uh, JSOC um, is still, um, uh, well, there are many project ideas, but there are much more students applying, and yeah, some idea project ideas and some applications may not be accepted just because there is another better application. Uh, the best way to prevent that is actually to to reach out to, uh, to the mentors earlier, to start communicating in public channels, and then you have uh, much more time to figure it out how to prevent that. Because yeah, if you join the public discussions one week before the application deadline, most likely uh, there is nothing uh, what can be done uh, at that point. If you start the discussion one month in advance, then yeah, there are much more opportunities to find a way to prevent the conflict. Okay, I think that sounds good. Yeah. That's it from my end, actually. Okay, yeah. yeah, any other questions, comments? Okay. Yes, no? Um, so should we uh, spend some time to um, review project ideas? Okay, uh, let's take a look what we have now. Uh, 
Mm, so yeah, this is our page. So we have a bunch of uh, project ideas which are already published. Most of them, are, yeah, they, they are fine. Though, yeah, I encourage all mentors uh, to communicate with students and maybe uh, make some changes in the proposals. Um, uh, for example, uh, there are many questions coming uh, about uh, how to start uh, this particular project idea. And uh, if you're a mentor, maybe it makes sense to explicitly put in uh, the project idea for students. Um, so we, yeah, for example, there were questions for discard build steps recently and maybe for other projects. Um, so yeah, if you're a mentor, uh, maybe adding such information would be helpful. Uh, for draft project ideas, uh, we have some uh, drafts here staged and uh, some of them uh, um, are under discussion. And we also have some uh, project ideas which have been uh, submitted recently. So what do we have? We have a proposal about freestyle to pipeline uh, job converter. Uh, it has been submitted by Craig recently. Then we have um, plugin tool manager CLI. Um, it's also submitted as a, as a pull request now. I just forgot to put the link here. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so it's here. So these project ideas, um, yeah, they're both for publishing as draft. And we also have uh, machine uh, learning uh, uh, project, which is also new, and probably we need to do something about that. So probably we should start from the top. So um, uh, there was a question about discard build steps in Nubia onboarding. Have I put it on my own or has somebody edited? Oleg, I put the line below that, but the newbie. Uh, okay, maybe the I discard will... build step was not me. OK, maybe uh, I was the one uh, who edited that. So uh, the question here is about um, getting started, because um, in this particular project, uh, there is no quick start guide. Uh, there is no newbie-friendly issues specifically related to this project. And actually, it would be great to have something. So we have uh, organization pro newbie-friendly issues. Uh, but if we it's possible to add some more information for students, it would be really helpful. Yeah, it's just an example of what I was talking about. Yes, so that was my project idea to start with. And yeah. uh, I'm glad that, uh, I'm, is Arnab on the call? I think he is. Yeah, he is. Okay, so. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this project, what's happened is I looked at it last night and the the discard build step feature, the discard, discard old builds feature has progressed since I looked at it the last time and it can now discard artifacts separately from discarding builds. So essentially all the features that the features that were missing are starting to get into the core of Jenkins. So the proposal for the start build step, um, in my opinion, needs to be rewritten because of that. Um, okay, so should uh, really so be going back to draft. So it's not about uh, starting the project from ground up anymore because some progress has already been made. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm. And I'm also saying that um, I described the project as a step in the pipeline, but so much has been done in core that I don't think we need a step anymore to do this. We can just keep improving the core. Yeah, so maybe it makes sense to have a series of updates here. So for example, you could move uh, the description uh, back to Google Doc and work together with Arnab to um, update it uh, to the current state. What do you think? Yes, that's uh, what needs to happen, yes. Arnab? Yeah, okay, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. Mm. Okay, yes, okay. Mm. 
yeah, maybe even uh, moving it back to draft uh, so that uh, students uh, do not get confused by the status. Oh, okay. yes. So should we do that? Yes. So uh, for draft project IDs, uh, it's still possible to apply to a draft. So it's not uh, an end of the world, but yeah. It just indicates that uh, there is an active discussion ongoing. The scope of such ideas may change significantly during the discussions until the first coding period starts. Something like that. OK. Um, uh, so the next topic was about uh, REST-related uh, uh, projects. So, Martin, uh, what is uh, the discussion here? So, the discussion here is that Jesse provided feedback on uh, how to write DSL compatible uh, plugins, uh, pipeline DSL compatible plugins. And he is adamant about not using uh, the global variable facility. And so, um, the plugin can only be. Uh, pure pipeline steps that return simple objects. That is his recommendation. So when I'm writing, when I wrote the examples, mm -hmm. I focused on making them pure steps. There's the discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah, so However, there's... there's been, you know, I've seen examples that you have proposed, Oleg, and um, I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that it agrees with what Jesse has said. So, well, uh, the implementation side, I'm not sure what, how to describe it anymore. Uh, yeah. So, personally, uh, I developed only a few Jenkins uh, plugins for pipeline. But I was always using uh, global variables, and I do not uh, feel that uh, there are any issues with using them. Um, I was uh, following this discussion a bit, but uh, well, personally, I do not uh, think that uh, um, it's a blocker. I still need to take a look why JC thinks uh, that they shouldn't be used, but well, they they are successfully used, and they are successfully used in pipeline libraries. Uh, so, on this page you're looking at, there is a um, the last uh, no 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 not at the bottom mm -hmm. at the top in the description. It says, if at all possible, limit your plugin to implementing plain steps. So that's the last um, sentence of this paragraph. Uh, well, maybe uh, managing global variables may be a bit more complicated because they have context, etc. But yeah, it's uh, the reasonable guideline uh, for uh, uh, pipeline developers because yeah, having a step and maintaining uh, this a step is generally more useful. Uh, but yeah, here, what we could do, of course, we could say that. Uh, yeah, we could just uh, replace it by, um, yeah, for example, would you mind if I just write here to map? Uh, what Go I, for it. Okay, so we could just say, so something like that with client, though. Um, So we could uh, say something like that. First, get uh, what so something like jobs uh, built in for, for example, and it uh, still uh, returns object, and yeah, it's for it formally uses uh, only a pipeline steps. But yeah, I have no strong opinion there. I think that uh, this one is also viable. So this with client call, is that the step or is that a global variable? Um, it's a, well, it really depends on how you implement that. Uh, but generally, it's a step. 
it's a step which takes closure as a last argument. The thing that uh, in Jenkins you can implement is it is a global variable because Groovy allows that, but yeah, generally it's a step. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I am completely clear, but I've never, um, uh, yeah, I've never ventured on that side of the DSL other than than using what already exists. So, okay. yeah, so maybe it makes sense uh, to discuss it uh, a bit uh, in the pipeline sick meeting. Because, well, although I understand what is uh, the purpose uh, to keep the things simple, um, yeah, having a global variable sometimes is really helpful. Okay, we can. I can attend. Um, mm -hmm. I can discuss the pipeline uh, authoring scene. Okay. Uh, Okay, well, let's move on then. So we have a GitLab uh, project idea. Actually, I wanted to land it uh, last week, but uh, last week uh, there was a bunch of comments from Jeff. Uh, so the proposal was just uh, full of comments. Uh, now is, they seem to be addressed. But uh, my question to you guys is whether we are ready to publish it. So there, there's two things. Um, I, I don't think the, I think the metadata needs to be reformatted to the new um, the, the new template. It's, it's still all at the top, so that's that's one thing. Yeah. Um, we we don't have any newbie friendly issues. Um, I'm not sure what they would be for for this project. Yeah. So my ask would be to have either a quick start guide uh, uh, on newbie friendly issues. So if you cannot provide particular uh, newbie friendly issues, you could uh, provide a quick uh, a guide how to start with your project idea, for example, how to explore Git, uh, GitLab plugin, uh, how to, um, and how to come up with a proposal. So a quick start guide would be a replacement for newbie friendly issues. Do you, do you know if we have examples of a quick start guide and other plugins? Yes, we do. Okay. So I put a quick start guide to all my proposals, unless I missed something. Oh, I still need to publish it for all strategy. But yeah, you can find the, my project ideas. Okay. So if you, Jeff and Rick, uh, could uh, come up uh, to a decision here, I think we should publish it. The rest looks fine. Do you, do you want to take a shot at it, Rick, or you want me to do it? Sorry. Are you on the call, Rick? Maybe not. Not sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't okay. I, I. I thought Rick was on the call. I guess not. He, he was on the call. Uh, I believe he's one of Mr. Jenkins. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem when you log in with a uh, generic account. Okay. Well, we'll we'll work it out in the Gitter channel, I guess. Okay, uh, so yeah, once you agree with each other, we publish uh, this uh, project idea. I think it's solid enough, and yeah, it was in review for quite long. Um, the other thing we could potentially do, we, we could send it out to the dev mailing list and, and see if there's any additional comments. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's valuable at this point. I mean, I, I think the, the proposal seems pretty clear to me. Uh, I believe that Rick has already sent a message to the mailing list. Though okay. it may make sense uh, to poke people in that mailing list, but yeah, I don't think it's a blocker for publishing. Okay. Okay. So should we move on? Mm. Yes. Yes.
Okay, mm, so what else do we have? Uh, so mm, we have pipeline step uh, documentation uh, generator proposal. Again, uh, after the review cycle, it looks uh, solid. So I had a comments for you, Martin, about the Javadoc, that uh, Javadoc is a bit uh, disconnected from uh, the project description. But yeah, I think that generally it's close to be published. Yes, I saw your comment about the Java doc. Um, mm -hmm. I find, okay, personally, I find the project proposal to be broad. So what I'm hoping is that a student is going to make a more, um, make a, a specific proposal, which is uh, directly, um, with more concrete, with more concrete actions and objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, other ideas. So something like that. Uh, what we could uh, do, for example, is the top. Yeah, we could say that. Uh, um, Javadoc publishing. Mm. Or uh, pipeline steps. Uh, then, uh, yeah, for example, uh, we can integrate it here, then um, publishing of documentation uh, to read the doc, uh, docs. Mm. And we can also say, for example, if we talk about uh, uh, Java doc, uh, Java doc uh, generation uh, for it's a link. Okay, we will clean it up later for pipeline libraries. Mm. I'm not clear what pipeline libraries is. Uh, sorry, you do not know what is pipeline library. I know what the pipeline library is, but what specific what pipeline libraries are you specifically referring to here? I think you're talking about the steps, right? Like the yeah. So what I say that, for example, uh, let a user may create a pipeline library like this one. And here you may see that uh, there is a bunch of steps with some documentation in uh, txt, which is bundle HTML, and also there are uh, readmes. So instead of that, it would be possible to generate uh, uh, Javadoc for pipeline library. And actually, I already made an attempt to do that at some point. Uh, so yeah, it may be useful to have uh, documentation generation for libraries, because libraries is what uh, how many users of script pipeline really use in pipeline? What do you think? So this would be for um, the pipeline library that you have shown on the screen, but yeah. also for other pipeline libraries? Yeah, right. So generated for pipeline libraries. OK. So. Um, the generator would have to know where to find those other pipeline libraries. Uh, for user pipeline libraries. Oh, for user pipeline libraries. Yeah, so users create pipeline libraries and they want documentation for them. We do not need uh, pipeline libraries for abstract pipelines in the web. At least I don't think so. Okay, yeah. so that might be a whole separate. Yeah, that's, another, that's a different like that's a good thing to put here, but I think that that might be like a whole different project. Yeah, right. It may be a separate project. Yeah, so that's uh, actually good. So maybe like it's just something that maybe a student's more interested in doing that versus mm. fixing the stuff on the website. But yeah, I think like that that entire effort might be like something completely different. But yeah, 
but we can, yeah. we can add that. There are maybe other flowers of pipeline uh, documentation. Uh, which could be submitted. Uh, be submitted as uh, GSOC project ideas. So something like that. What I'm thinking here is that um, a lot of it will be in the student proposal. So the student will, I guess the student is going to look at all of this. And, you know, if a proposal, if a student proposes to take on, let's say, 30% of what's in here and do it really well, and it, it's, it's enough work yeah. for, a whole, for a whole program of four months, then I'm happy with it. It doesn't have to be exactly what we wrote. It doesn't have to be yeah, like, exactly right. what we wrote. Right. 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 Uh, we give project ideas. We don't uh, give uh, project uh, descriptions to copy paste. And it's intentional. So, uh, guys, I have to drop again. Uh, but yeah, if you want, you can continue the discussion. Uh, regarding this project idea, we could probably take it offline or discuss in detail at the next uh, pipeline authoring SIG meeting. Okay, sound good. Okay, so do you continue meeting or yeah. do you here? I have to drop off as well. I, I, I do as well. Uh, working week. <laughs> yeah, everybody has meetings uh, this time. Okay, uh, so yeah, thanks a lot uh, uh, for participation to everyone. Um, every, any quick questions? Okay, and then um, let's press it in the chat. And yeah, for the next meeting, I believe we should just uh, stop 10 minutes before the deadline, and then we discuss uh, other things and uh, close down the meeting. Yeah, I just didn't know that I have a meeting now, but I do. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, then uh, see you all, and thanks again. Any questions? Let's uh, discuss them in Gitter. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye.